<laughs> it is a fun book and you're wondering why I'm wearing this pink wig, aren't you? Can you guess? Because we're doing... Looking at an artist who also wears pink wigs. And I happen to have a pink wig in my wardrobe. Okay, so this is an artist called Yayo Kusama and she is from Japan. And she is a brilliant artist who is still alive today. And she's kind of known as the sort of... Um, the spotty artists. She likes to do a lot of spots. Oh look, spotty dress. Okay, are you ready? Yayo Kusama was born in the country of Japan on the island of Honshu in a town called Matsumoto City. An old palace made of wood and stone overlooked a moat where swans swam. The streets were lined with little shops and snow-capped mountains rose in the distance, swallowing up the sun as it went down in the evening. That sounds like a nice place to live. <gasps> Yayo's family owned nurseries where all kinds of flowers and vegetables grew and workers tended the plants as they matured from seeds to sprouts to stalks. But Yayo yearned for a different life. Far from the countryside, she dreamed about what lay beyond the mountains, in places far from Matsumoto City. She longed to leave home and see the world. Look how big the flowers are. Mm, they're quite spotty as well, aren't they? Yayo's mother wanted her to stay home. Yeah, that's spotty. That's spotty too. Every page has got some secret spots to spot. Mm. Yeah, I'm drawing. Yeah. Yayo's mother wanted her to stay home and learn old fashioned manners, how to dress elegantly, walk demurely, eat politely, and find a proper husband. But Yayo wanted to be an artist. Every day she went outside with ink and brushes and paper. She drew things she saw and things she imagined. She looked closely at the pebbles that lined the riverbed and at the leaves and stalks of plants and she drew them as chains of tiny cells that looked like dots. When she was older and studying in the art school, her teachers disapproved of her work and they demanded that Yayo paint in the traditional, precise Japanese style. She wanted to go where she could live without rules. Would you like to go with live without rules? Yeah. What would you do? <gasps> that would be like children ruling the world then, wouldn't it? Without any adults. Yeah. <clears throat> when she was 28 years old, she packed up her silk kimonos and thousands of drawings and stuffed dollar bills into the toes of her shoes. It was her first aeroplane trip. There were only four other passengers and the weather was stormy with rain and lightning. The aeroplane wobbled and dipped as it flew to America. Whoa! In New York, Yayo went to the top of the Empire State Building, the tallest building in a city full of tall buildings. When she looked down, she saw buses and cars and yellow taxis zooming up and down the avenues and bankers and teachers and artists rushing to work. From up on the 86th floor, they looked like dots. She felt very far away from Matsumoto City and her mother's rules. Here, it seemed, anything was possible. Yayo sat about, turning her drawings of dots into paintings. The dollar bills that she had brought to America quickly ran out, and she spent with what little money she had left on paints and canvases. She worked day and night. She painted when she was cold. She painted when she was hungry. She painted when she was lonely. And she turned her dots into sculptures too, into soft stuffed tubes that covered sofas and chairs and boats. She was devoted to her dots. For her, they were a way of thinking about the world among the stars. As one dot among millions of others, they were a way of thinking about infinity. 
Ooh, infinity, what's that mean? Um, numbers ever end. Never ending numbers, dots, never ending. Sometimes when she grew frustrated, she visited the Museum of Modern Art. She gazed at paintings by other artists and she thought about why and how they were made. She looked at pictures of dancing girls and swirling night skies, trying to solve them as if they were puzzles. We go to galleries like that too, don't we? Yeah. Her painting seemed so different from those she had seen at MoMA. When she at last was ready to show her work in public, she invited all the friends she had made in New York. When she arrived at the gallery, a crowd was spilling out onto the sidewalk. Her friends lifted her into the chair, shouting, Yayo, you've finally done it! Word about her artwork spread quickly. Her friends told their friends, newspapers wrote about her work and reporters clamoured to interview her about her dots. Now she began to show them in other cities all over the United States and Europe. She's getting more famous. Ooh, her dots were covering the world. They appeared in Venice in thousands of dot-shaped mirrors scattered over a big green lawn. <gasps> metal balls on a pumpkin on a pier a giant pumpkin with spots look on dresses and t-shirts on people walking down the street and in mirrored rooms where glowing dots were reflected and reflected again an infinity of dots i keep looking at your wings up the story <laughs> i'm a dotty mummy oh look there she is, look. She looks similar to me. <laughs> I keep looking at the wig, I can't the story. Having visited many countries all over the world, Yayoi returned to Japan. The country had changed since she had left, with many different artists challenging the old traditional style. As I Yayoi had been doing all along. Her favourite country I think is this. Red I think she loves red and she loves yellow, but she loves pink. She does love colour, doesn't she? But she definitely likes spots and dots. She still lives in Japan and she continues to paint her dots every day. She's in her 90s. She's a really old lady now and she still paints. Ah, and there's some of her artworks, look. This I one like actually... this one. That one looks like a worm. It <laughs> looks like loads of worms. Yeah. Looks like a chair. Oh my gosh, that'd be quite comfy to sit in. Look, yeah. it's a chair. Yeah. Yeah. Infinity nets, that's called. Mm -mm. Let's have a look. <gasps> Infinity mirrored yeah. room. The souls of millions of light years away. And that, that was in city looks. It's so not a city, nice. it's a room with mirrors and lights. When you walk in it, mm -hmm. it looks like it will go on forever. Infinity of lights. <gasps> an exhibition so that comes around every now and again in the Tate Modern that that's showing. Look at that! No my she's got the obliteration in her room. She's got everything everything's spotty. dotty and spotty everything in her kitchen. Well it's an exhibition it's not actually her kitchen but she's done it so you can have a look at it. Look it just looks like loads of colours isn't it? Yeah. Pink, blue, yellow, green, red. <laughs> Would you like a kitchen like that? Yeah. Would you get confused? No. <laughs> but I but I will get confused about the wall because I'll think because I don't know because I don't know where the the fridge is or the cook is. <laughs> yeah. That was spotty. <laughs> yeah, you might miss the chair. Yeah. And sit on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite busy. Funny though, different. Yeah. And there she is. Look, she likes to wear the same outfit as her background. She's wearing a dress. <laughs> the same as the sculpture and the wallpaper and the floor. Wow, so she's born in 1929. Maybe she can have a white, white spot on her wig. <laughs> she, yeah, she needs a white spot on her wig, you're right. That's missing. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Yayo Kusama. Say Yayo Kusama. Yayo Kusama. Yayo Kusama. Yayo Kusama. 
There you go. Thanks for listening.